They just gave it to us. So we take everything. We're going to uh, sell the other one. And uh, we also, when we, uh, our house is up for sale, as soon as we get it uh, sold, we're going to sell the, the piano, that grand, baby grand piano. I mean, the church, we, this is, uh, we, we have no room for the baby grand in here. It'll take up half the front, so we'll sell that, and that'll be income for the church. We don't need to keep it any longer. If we're going to be here for a while, it's senseless in keeping that piano. So uh, we'll try to get a thousand or so out of it. I don't know. It, it was, I think we'll ask about twelve hundred and see what they, what they'll if they'll do, go along with us on the thing. Well, I was looking in uh, in uh, Peddler's Post. It may be uh, there. The problem is it's it's not a brand name. There's no name on it. it. There is no name in it at all. There is no name anywhere, and that gives us a little bit of a. Uh, problem, but I'm going to. I will call uh, the people who. Um, that's what. That's what he paid for it. I think he paid two thousand for it. But uh, anyway, we'll find out. We'll see what we can uh, do. Get the most we can out of it, obviously. Uh, but uh, it's a. It's a good little piano, but it really requires a larger area. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that we'll be able to get something out of it, which ought to help us in our finances. Uh, um, I have not heard the uh, special offerings, uh, special gifts that came in for Gary Horton, how much it, they were. Uh, but uh, at the time that he had counted, that was there was I know, I know at least one or two checks that came after that. But the time he counted, there was nothing that came in. Uh, that was just before we uh, we closed up. But then uh, some a couple put some checks in afterwards. As you know, Gary does not charge to come it's it's done on a faith basis he trusts the lord but if we can help him by paying for his gas we we try to do that uh they had a tremendous time at northside high school he said i talked to um of course greg schaefer was there greg steer went out there and uh, bonnie was saying that uh they interrupted his speech so many times that he ran over with applause, uh, and he tried to stop him from doing that. And when he, uh, one place where he talked about, um, Greg was telling me that when, when he talked about the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross, about 50 kids started to applaud. <laughs> that was amazing, you know. And at the end, he got a standing ovation from Northside High School. I'd say that's something. From good old Northside, I'm I appreciate that kind of a response. And I, I appreciate the courage of the principal that took uh, the, uh, I mean, after all, the school movement, the, the education movement is entirely political. It isn't how smart you are, I don't think it's, uh, but in the case of the believer, if God doesn't promote you, you're not promoted, so you get promoted by God and not by people. Okay, but so uh, we pray for Gary. He's uh, going to be in Columbus, Ohio for the next few days and then he's going to head back home for a short time and then he starts off again the, they don't want him to really go for two weeks at a time it's really too much pressure on him but once he's in an area he doesn't want to drive back and then come back so he tries to cover that area completely so he'll give us two days a couple of days in Columbus a couple of days in in uh, Cleveland and so forth the uh, rescue mission writes a note uh, and say, says, we are in need of volunteers to help sort clothing and bric-brac, whatever that is, in our warehouse. Uh, if you, anyone who'd be interested in assisting, here's a number to call. They, they need to, only for a couple of weeks they need somebody, so if you're interested, why? We'll do that, all right? Let's bow our heads now in preparation for our study. A confession of all known sin is necessary so that you can be taught by God the Holy Spirit. Let's bow together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege and the honor of being in the royal family of God. Now may God, Holy Spirit, glorify God the Son as we seek to uh, study together the word that you've given to us and uh, the wonderful word of God, the thrilling word of God, and all that the word of God has to say to us. 
Um, I pray that as the Holy Spirit teaches, there may be open hearts and souls and that there may be spiritual advance as believers grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In whose name I pray, amen. The um, study that we're currently involved in is the study of the grace of God. Grace is the most thrilling word in the vocabulary of the believer because everything we are, everything we have, everything we ever will be is dependent upon who and what God is. His grace tells us that it is, is whatever we have can never be earned, it can never be deserved, it can never be merited in any way. It means you can't be good enough to get it, you can't be bad enough to lose it, you can't work hard enough to get it, you can't work little enough to lose it. There is, it has nothing to do with what you do except for one thing, and that is, it's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, religion has been screwing that up and mixing it up for years and years, and we study it under the doctrine of the enemy of grace, which is legalism, a little bit later on. We'll come down to that. There's legalism in salvation. There's legalism in spirituality. Legalism in maturity. Legalism has permeated so much of religion that it's an abomination, a stench in the nostrils of God. But what churches have done to destroy the grace of God is, is a, uh, it's an unforgivable thing. Except God will forgive them because it's character. Now, that means that everything we are to begin with and everything that we are when we end up is going to be by means grace. And we start off with what is called common grace. That means something that's very important. Nobody could understand the gospel by means of their own human ability. I don't care what your IQ is. I don't care if you're a genius or if you're one shade above a moron. You could never understand the gospel if God didn't do something for you. God the Holy Spirit must do something. And what he does is he makes the gospel clear inside your soul so that you understand it. That's common grace. The grace of God does this for every member of the human race when the gospel is presented. Just as the other evening, as Gary presented the gospel under uh, enthusiasm, E for E, E for enthusiasm, he presented the gospel very, very clearly. But uh, the unsaved person could never understand it, even then, unless God the Holy Spirit gave common grace. At the same time, the Holy Spirit issues an invitation from God the Father to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the person who is the speaker is just an, inter, uh, an interim person. He's, he, he, he has nothing to do with the invitation that is issued. God the Holy Spirit now uh, usher, uh, offers an invitation to this person to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now his volition must move, move in, his free will. And uh, under his volition, he can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or he can reject the Lord Jesus Christ. It's up to him. But assuming he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, God has to do something else or else he'd never be saved. God has to offer him efficacious grace. That is, God has to take his faith and make it effective for salvation. At the same time, God does 40 things for that person at that instant in time, and he gives them all to that believer, and the believer doesn't feel one thing. He doesn't know anything about the 40 things, except he's been told generally over in this part that he will be saved. But that's just one of 40 things that God does for you the moment you push your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Holy Spirit makes it effective for salvation. Now you enter into the life, and there is no way that you can ever lose your salvation. It doesn't make any difference who you are or what you are. Once you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are eternally secure. You can never lose that salvation. But there are three things that function now. Living grace. God's going to do three, uh, work in three areas for you now that you're his child. The first area is called logistical grace. 
and logistical grace is that everything that God can do, not only to keep you alive, but to bless you in this life. And if, since it's on the basis of grace, again, remember, God's doing it because of His character, not because you are good, not because you're Miss or Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, or because you do uh, uh, this or that or anything. God does it on the basis of His character and His character alone. And He blesses you. That's why some people who are so self-righteous that they've got their pharisaical robes wrapped around them, they look at people who are uh, not uh, as uh, uh, religious as they are, and they can't understand how God can bless those people when, uh, after all I've done, God owes me a blessing. God doesn't owe you a blessing. God doesn't owe anybody a blessing. He never owes anybody anything. But God gives it on the basis of His character, and He blesses the good and the bad. He blesses those who are faithful and those who are unfaithful. He blesses those who are sinning and those who are not. He blesses everyone under logistical grace. Well then, says the idiot, should we just go on sinning? No, because number six is correcting grace. The correcting grace of God now moves in, and God, because He loves you, corrects you. And He corrects you through three phases. The first is a warning stage. He will warn you by the uh, so-called accidents of life. There are no accidents in life. There's no such thing as good luck or bad luck. God is moving in every phase of life, and He warns you that you're heading in the wrong direction. Gently, graciously, kindly, He puts up the, the red light. He uh, puts uh, uh, something across your path to stop you, to wake you up. But if you fail to listen to warning discipline, then he intensifies the discipline, and this is discipline that really hurts. In fact, it is un called, it's unbearable discipline. You can't bear it very long. If, if you could, you would just keep on doing it, but you can't take this very long. Uh, it's so unbearable. And if you continue, then God will take you out of this life under the sin unto death. He just removes you, takes you home to heaven, where he, uh, he will uh, offer you uh, the same reward, the same uh, grace that every other believer gets. Now, if you are corrected, and if under logistical grace you begin to study the Word of God, and you grow in grace, you grow up spiritually, you begin to go positive toward Bible doctrine, and you begin to study the Word of God, you will reach the area of super grace. Now, super grace is when God... You reach the place of, uh, where you have built a cup in your soul, where you're, you have grown up, and God can pour fantastic blessing. This is called the life beyond dreams. God will provide for you a life which is so fantastic, you couldn't dream about it, you couldn't imagine it in your wildest imaginations, what God has for you. It's above anything that you could uh, uh, think or ask for. It's fantastic blessing in this life because your priorities are squared away. Now, after this, you can come to uh, the end of your life. Now, if you have, if you come to uh, dying and you have uh, lived your life uh, under uh, failure to follow the high colors, failure to grow up, but under a sinful life, uh, it, ignoring the warning and the intensified stage, you can check out of this life by crawling through the sin unto death or crawling through a thousand yards of ground glass. But if you are going the other direction, God offers you what is called dying grace. That is, you walk from time to eternity, move walking over the high golden bridge that is so glorious and so wonderful that you don't even know that you've gone from time to eternity till you uh, look up and there you see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. Now, you are entering into eternity future. And God has not finished pouring His grace on you. He still has grace for you, and this is in two phases, 9 and 10. Uh, number 9, uh, we will call uh, surpassing grace. And this uh, is... Uh, our inheritance. And again, it doesn't depend on anything you have done. Every believer has an inheritance that God has been holding for you. But there's something else for you also. And that is rewarding grace. 
for the believer who has grown up over here and the believer who has received super grace blessing, life beyond dreams in this life, God has special rewards for those believers in eternity future. It's called rewarding grace. And that's what we're looking at. We finally progress to these two points in the categorical listing of grace. So now, uh, having entered uh, eternity future, you have, uh, you're going to receive these two things. The inheritance is described for us as incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for those who are kept by the power of God. And this rewarding grace is described in every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. But it isn't uh, God paying you back for what you have done. It is God rewarding you for your attitude of positive volition toward him. So let's note uh, then under the principle uh, uh, of uh, surpassing grace, first of all, the definition and an explanation. God has, in his matchless grace, created you. He created you to live forever. He wants you to live, and you will live forever. Not necessarily in this physical body, but you will live forever. You will live forever either in hell or in heaven after this life is over. Those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, those who will not believe on Him, will spend eternity in a physical body, separated from God, in a place of torment that does not consume, in, in uh, which, that place which is called the lake of fire. It is uh, summed up in the word hell. It's very convenient to use this term. But as a lake of fire that burns but does not burn up, it does not consume. Well, uh, heaven is the alternative. And the, the difference that causes the, the person to make the difference is his own choice. God gives you the opportunity to make the choice. Now, how do you get to, to heaven and, and avoid hell? Well, it's not by joining a church. It's not by being good. It's not by uh, giving money. It's not by being baptized. It has to do with one thing. You use your free will and volition to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. You realize that He had you in mind when He went to the cross, and He took your place, He died in your place, and you simply exhale faith in His finished work. If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, if you say, I do not have any need for Him, then you will spend your life, e your eternal life, in what is called the second death, or eternal death. You will spend your... Uh, eternal death uh, in the total separation from God under the torments and one of the torments will be memory that you will remember the opportunities you had to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ on the other hand if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ his grace which created you to live forever in heaven has provided for you some fantastic things uh, as far as heaven is concerned. The first uh, of these special categories of blessing is known as the inheritance. Now, when you're talking about an inheritance, you understand uh, that the inheritance is something that the w somebody who has something or the wealthy will leave to those who are his. You are a member of his royal family. Therefore, God the Father has provided a fantastic inheritance for you. Now, the first thing that this inheritance uh, will involve is uh, the, your appointment with death has been canceled. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die 
But after this, the judgment. That has been canceled. There is no judgment. You know, what's tragic, you hear about people thinking in terms of the fact that when we die, we're all going to stand before God, and God's going to let some people into heaven and some people into hell. That's not true. There is no such thing as a general judgment like that. Though the person who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ is already passed from death to life. He already has, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the only begotten Son of God. God has given to us eternal life. When does that eternal life begin? The day you die? No. The eternal life begins the day you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. From that moment on, you have eternal life, and there is no way you can ever have that eternal life taken away from you. We, uh, we ha have already passed from death to life. And so, it isn't a matter of, uh, of when we die we have eternal life. We have it the moment we believe. And our appointment with death has been canceled. And remember, that's why dying grace is given. If you walk the high golden bridge in time to eternity, it's going to be such a glorious thing that you won't even know about it. It'll be just so tremendous. It'll be like taking a stroll at sunset. And when just going out and seeing the beautiful sunset and uh, just taking a beautiful stroll over the love bridge and suddenly you get to the other side and you realize, my goodness, I've never seen anything like this before. And they're standing waiting for you physically. He doesn't because somebody has drawn a picture, but recognized by the nail prints in his hand, his feet. And he'll be there waiting to uh, give you a, uh, I, I'm going to sell a warm hug. I don't know how, what, what he's going to do. There's no way we know, but we know he, was, he stands up. He leaves by the hand of God, Father, throne, steps down off the throne, and comes down where we are, and when we enter into the glorious place, call him. His presence forever and ever. And there is no judgment. The judgment. Why? The judgment. He the judgment cause. When he died, he knew no sin. Because I have sin in Christ. So we don't have any judgment. There is now no judgment. Also in Christ Jesus. So are the first thing we have in the explanation of judgment. Second thing is we have a doom. Chapter one to three. Lord Jesus, that I go to prepare for you. In my fathers are many. Oh no, the words are correct. Lame place. It's a terrible thing to say, but it may dwell with you. Go to you. God has a special place. You know, the, uh, our believers are said to be aliens on this earth. <laughs> now, we don't look like the aliens that we see. I tell you, know, the big eyes and big heads are. We drive around in saucers, although we drive by hidden. Yeah, the issue. We're really the aliens here on the earth. The Lord left the first visitor of outer space. When he left the earth and came down on the first Christmas, but he took us all what he called uh, aliens or streaming pits. So our home. Our home is somewhere else. Our home is his presence. In the presence of the Lord, and this is what we call a heaven. A tremendous thing. A great place us where we'll forever be. Now, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do in heaven later on. But one thing I guarantee you, it's not a place where we sit around on a road, wearing a white robe, a halo above our heads, and playing a harp. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. Who wants to spend eternity doing that? Either a cop paid to do that. There's a lot of things going to go on in, in the eternity future which we'll talk about. But this, our new home is a glorious place. And since we have with the new home a, glo a new glorified body, and we know that his, our body to be like his body, it's a resurrection body, we know some things about it. See, the Lord's body could go through a wall. The, 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 when his resurrection body, when his soul's in the upper room, uh, and the doors were locked, suddenly he was there right midst of them. It was also fed to space travel. He could move from one place to another. The disciples walked from Jerusalem and, and the Judah, uh, uh, Judea up to uh, Galilee, and the Lord Jesus Christ there in a second of time because he it was capable of space travel. And we will have that same capability uh, so that this new body is going to be quite a fantastic body. Uh, it's going to put off all of the limitations. It's also going to put off all of the, uh, the problems. Uh, someone has said, uh, if you are true to your teeth when you are young, when you are old, they will not be false to you. Well, I have been—I was not true to my teeth when I was young, and so I have a couple of bridges in my mouth. And the other day, one fell out, and I wanted to see the dentist to have it fixed. And uh, I said to her, I want to know, I'm not afraid. I am in absolute terror. I, there's nothing all of life scares me like going to the dentist. When I see him stand there with that thing in his hand and that long needle on the end, which going to put Novocaine in, he said, I can feel your heart beating. I said, you're lucky. I just hadn't stopped. And then you're in the next room, you hear this, I am in absolute total terror. Can't, I mean, oh, that just is enough to 
to drive me off the tree. Everyone almost have to strap me down. Which explains the fact that I never went when I was young because I was so afraid. Now I either you have to go or get your falsies, and you know they're always slipping and falling, falling out on you or something like that. But anyway, there's no more of that, none of that. And now I notice as I get uh, older in years that uh, no longer do I need upper bifocals in the lower. I need something in the middle. <laughs> the upper, the top ones don't do it. The bottom ones don't do it. I need something in the center. Otherwise, I need longer arms. One or the other is going to have to work. But uh, I don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just one of those things. This is the body. Uh, you play football when you're young, you get old, your knees tell it. Your, your knees will tell it. I guarantee that. Uh, uh, when you're young, you're, res you're resilient. You've got all that zip in your zipper. You're just great. Pretty soon, you get beyond that age, and your knees begin to bother you. You ever wonder why they quit playing basketball? Uh, uh, like Wilt, you know, Wilt is telling me, he, he looked great, but uh, what's, what's, what's happened? He looked like he's in great shape. And uh, uh, I look at Magic going back to play and getting more money than I, I can believe exists. But uh, uh, he's not going he's, he's to play very much longer. I cannot believe that uh, Nolan Ryan is still pitching in, in his 40s. Why, why, don't, why can't they pitch till they're 60? The old body gives up. That's why the old body doesn't have anything. It's, it's, it's starting to, de to decline the, from the time you're born. It's going downward. But God has a new body for us, a resurrection body. That is, no more pain, no more uh, breaking down of the body. It's a fantastic resurrection body. And everybody gets it. If you're, you're, you're good or bad or, or faithful or unfaithful, you're going to get it as part of your inheritance. Now, with this new body, there's also no old sin nature. That's, the old sin nature is what gets you into trouble. Doing what comes naturally. We're all born with the old sin nature. And the old sin nature, you know, why, why do you sin? Because you have an old sin nature, that's why. You never have to ask your, your children, why did you do that? All you have to do is know they have an old sin nature. Just like their father. The new body will also eliminate tears, pain, suffering, and everything else. It'll be total happiness forever. It is a, it is a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, gift that God has for us. Now, uh, he tells us, a uh, turn to First Peter, uh, some, uh, chapter 1, that uh, tells us something about this, uh, this inheritance which is ours. First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. He says, Praise be to God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, that's grace in action, he has given us a new birth into a living confidence through the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the dead. In other words, our confidence is based on the fact that because Christ was raised from the dead, we will be resurrected to a new body. Then he goes on to say, verse 4, And to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. The three words which are used in the King James Version are incorruptible, undefiled, and unfading, or fadeth not away. Three things describe the inheritance that is waiting for us. Uh, the word incorruptible looks like this in the Greek. A-P-H-T-H-A-R-O-T-O-S. Now, your alpha from a negative negates it, and so it's something which will never deteriorate. Something in which the deterioration process does not apply. So we will, it will never, ever uh, become uh, deteriorated. This, this uh, inheritance will never deteriorate. It's, it's never going to get changed. It's going to be fantastic. Undefiled is amiantas. Again, the alpha from a negative, I-M-I-A-N-T-O-S. Without spot or stain. Uh, contrasted to an earthly inheritance, which has many defects, many failings, this has no spot, it has no stain, which indicates it is an absolutely perfect inheritance. And the third word unfading is amarantos in the Greek, A-M-A-R-A-N-T-O-S, and which means that it doesn't change by virtue of age or by use. Uh, the uh, New International translates it as I read before: never perish, spoil or fade. This is, uh, it says, reserved in heaven for you. The word reserved is terreo, oh, which looks like this. T-E-R-E-O. Terreo. Terreo means to be uh, walked over, to be protected, to be guarded. God has deposited this, and it's there, and nobody will ever touch it. It's going to be yours. But not only that, you are kept by the power of the, this is this word. Pardon me. Uh, P-H-R-O-U-R-E-O, -E which means to be preserved or guarded uh, or kept. In other words, your inheritance is being kept to you, and you are being kept or guarded by God's so you have the inheritance. No dead you're going to leave on the Lord Jesus Christ. 